Hey everybody, the Can-Am Riker is being called the best new entry level or bike or machine for young riders. That's a pretty bold claim, so let's see how it stacks up. Today we're going to take a look at HD's offerings in that market compared to the new Can-Am Riker. Alright, so today we're going to spend most of our time talking about Harley Davidson and their offerings. If you want to check out my thoughts on the Riker, then you can check out this video here. It should be sliding on the screen right now. There it is. So you can watch that one first, watch that one second. Really doesn't matter. Completely up to you. But preliminarily, just taking a look at this, Harley Davidson to new and entry level or young riders offers the Harley Davidson Street 500, the Street 750, or the Street Rod. Just look at the pricing alone. $68.99, $75.99, and $86.99. Right there, they're all just about below what the Can-Am Riker is offering. So for a brand new bike off the showroom, this is the pricing you're starting with. Of course, yeah, you always have taxes and title and licensing fees and all that. But seriously, you're getting a 500 as compared to the Riker, which baseline comes at a 600 inline two a 750 for cheaper money 75.99 and you get the street rod for about the same price now for a lot of people like yeah but those are too small you know stuff like that okay fine i get it let's take a look at one of my favorites to me when i think of harley davidson i think of the sportster and especially the iron 883 this is an absolutely beautiful motorcycle. So if I'm in the market for a new bike and I want to spend about, well, let's say let's say $9,000. So we're going to say $9,000 as a baseline before everything else. And I definitely want to take a look at it. Oh, man, in that black denim. That looks absolutely awesome. That really, really does. See the difference? There's a true difference between black matte metal, as you can see here, and black matte plastic, as you can see here. Not quite sure if the rear fender is plastic or metal, but it looks like it has a little more of a metal sheen to it. But look at the entire front end. The entire front end, it's, it's, it's all plastic. Now, I know a lot of the Can-Am machines... Or plastic hell. My $32,000 F3 Limited Special Series is all plastic. I mean, you know, if you throw a magnet in a thing, it would bounce back at you like a Super Bowl. But that's the difference. I mean, look at how beautiful that paint scheme looks. And I love it all black. I really, really do. They blacked out even the exhaust and everything. This is just a mean looking motor scooter. It really, really is. And honestly, the chrome gas cap. That really doesn't bother me. I'm not a chrome fan. I'm not a, a brushed metal looking fan. I'm really, really not. But I kind of like that. It kind of breaks up, you know, the black mat. It really, really does. Plus, the one thing with HD that no one else can compare with is the customizability. Custom, I don't even know how to say it. The cust You can really, really customize these things. I mean, there are thousands of aftermarket products for the Sportster and for HDs in general. So you can change the bars, you can change the gas cap, you can relocate the speedo, you can do any number of things. The first thing that a lot of people do is they take the mirrors and they invert them underneath, which is absolutely a cool look. Now, one thing that HD is doing right are their signal lights, their tail lights. A lot of people go for the little button LEDs. You don't have to on this. These are actually close to the body they really don't need to be changed right away. I mean, they're, they're not sticking out like rabbit ears. You know, even taking a look at the front, these are pretty low-key signal lights. And look at it. It just has a really, really nice look to it. It's got an aggressive look to it, and it's got a I really don't care what you think look to it. Plus, you roll it off the showroom, a month later, this bike could look completely different. This machine... Well, a month later, you could change some color panels for a few hundred 
dollars. And another thing I want I want to talk about, you know, getting away from HD for a second, because I don't want to spend the whole video on the Riker. But with HD here, with with, with the Riker here, uh, that to me looks like the whole front radiator is open. I could be wrong, but that looks like the fins of the radiator. Now they may be a little tougher. They may be made of a different material, but if this is going off-road or on gravel or things like that, what if one of those pieces of gravel kick up and go in between this grate because these spaces are pretty big and that piece of gravel goes right through my radiator? It, it, it can happen. It, it really, really can. So I'm not quite sure about having this exposed, but I'm sure people will come out and say, no, 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 the radiator is protected by this, by this, by this. Yeah, I just still don't want my radiator you know, that exposed. Now, it's roughly the same thing, except the fins are a little bit smaller on my F3 Limited, but I'm not riding on gravel roads, and it's not being marketed as something that could ride on gravel or dirt roads. And another thing, too, is uh, I wanted to mention this in the first video. I was trying to be nice, but I saw some live, you know, real-life pictures of it, not, you know, promo pictures. It looks like a dude with an, with an underbite or an overbite. I don't know, when, when the teeth kind of stick out like that. And, hey, man, how you doing? What's going on? You know, and, and their, their their bottom teeth, you know, stick out past their, their, their lips. That's kind of what it looks like. But, okay, so that's the Riker. So HD now. So, of course, yeah, we love the black denim. We really, really love the black denim. But let's take a look at some specs. All right, I know you're not supposed to spec sheet shop, or you shouldn't. It should be the bike that talks to you that really, really... And I, I, I really like this color, too. I, I'm, I'm more of a blacked-out fan, but... I just like the lines of this thing. I really, really do. Okay, but but that's why I'm looking at HD because let's just say, you know, I'm a new rider and I have 10 grand laying around and I want a, I want a new bike. I want it my own. I want the first, you know, 20 miles to be mine on it. And I, I don't I don't want to buy something used out of the paper. So I, I, let's just say I have the means to get it. So we're going to compare, you know, oranges to oranges here. So honestly, you know, if, if we look at the engine, I know you're not supposed to spec sheet shop, but the engine torque on the Sportster on the Iron 883 is 53.8 foot-pounds of torque on a fully gassed-up, ready-to-go, 564-pound machine. That is a huge difference. That is a huge, huge difference between something that produces... 35 foot-pounds of torque on a machine that weighs 600 pounds. So let's say, yeah, about 616, so let's say about 625 with gas in it. Without riding it, I can tell right away that the K&M is going to be severely underpowered. Now, for all those people who go, oh, the gearing is different, let me blow that out of the water for you. The Sportster is a fully manual transmission, meaning you can ride those gears out to any RPM you want and get more power out of it, whereas the k and Riker, well, it's a CVT transmission, means it's constant automatic. You have no choice when it's going to switch gears. That's it. So, again, you know, I'm not a big fan of HD because if I was, I would have owned one. I, I didn't like them for certain reasons, but the sports line, especially the Iron 883, really, really catches my eye. And the one thing I really like about them is keep the 114s, keep the 107s, the Milwaukee 8s. That Evo engine has been proven time and time again that they keep in the Sportsters to be a bulletproof engine. Now, the 1333, uh, third, I'm sorry, 1330, you know, inline three Rotax engine of the K&M Roadsters, the Spider Roadsters, those are awesome engines. You're not getting that with the Riker. You're getting a 600 in line three. It's going to be a very, very, very big difference just from the weight of the machines and just from Harley Davidson having the manual transmission and the Riker having the CVT or fully automatic transmission. I'm not a big Harley fan, but if I'm a new rider, I'm getting more bang for my buck with going with an Iron 883 or 
one of the street versions of, of the Harley line. And I'm just basing off of Can-Am's claims of this new Riker is going to be geared and really revolutionize new riders and young riders. I'm sorry, it's, it's not. It's a trike. It's still a trike. Young riders are not going to want to ride a trike. A trike are for experienced riders that just want to take it easy now. People that have some kind of physical, you know, problem or, or, or disability. Or people that have been, you know, they, they, they've, they've had the crap scared out of them, to be honest. I mean, you know, a lot of stuff can happen out there on two wheels. And it really, really can scare the crap out of you. So anyone that got off of two wheels because, you know, they had a moment where, you know, it, it really, really scared the life out of them. I get it. I will never, ever, ever make fun of anyone or slam anyone for, you know, getting off of two wheels for a trike. It's really, it, it, it's not fun out there sometimes. I get it. But, you know, you're, you're marketing this to new riders. So if, if my kid comes to me and says, Hey, uh, you know, Dad, I, I, I want some money. And, and I don't have a kid. Believe me, I dodged that bullet many, many times. I was very, very careful of where my DNA wound up. But, you know, if I did have a kid, he's like, Oh, I, 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 Dad, I need 10 grand because I want to start riding or whatever. All right. And, you, and he came to me with these choices. I, I'm going to go with the Can-Am Riker or I'm going to go with the HD. Before he can even finish, I'm going like, you're getting an iron. You're getting an iron because I know... When he pulls up with his friends on an iron, his friends are going to be like, wow, that's kind of cool. I like that. But honestly, let's just say, like, you know, you, you're, you're out of college. You're starting your life. You don't have a pot to piss in. You you amass $750,898 in student loan debt. Ah, what the hell? Let's throw the kid another eight or nine grand or whatever for a bike. You know, they're going to go for the Harley Davidson because at the end of the day, Harley Davidson has the name. And as you can see... Harley Davidson surely has the look. So, but don't take my word for it. I'm just a schmuck with a laptop. Check out the website yourself. Spec Sheet Shop. I know, like, Spec Sheet Shop, you shouldn't, but, you know, that's the first line of your defense as a consumer is to look at, compare apples to apples. And Harley Davidson, when it comes to newer or younger riders, I think against the Riker has it on lockdown and on point. If I could ride two wheels, I would get the Iron 883 in a second just to tool around on town because it just looks like a lot of fun and it looks badass. All right, now this is a pretty juvenile minor thing, but Marketing is everything. It really, really is. Marketing draws us in. Marketing helps us make our decisions. Market, marketing catches our eyes. Now, just from a marketing standpoint, this guy on the HD website, just the look of him alone, this guy could truly kick this guy's ass any day of the week. I mean, seriously, this guy's sitting there like, yeah, I ride a trike hey this guy looks at you and goes what the f do you care what i ride who are you seriously that's the difference you walk up to this guy you're going to start the sentence with excuse me sir just from the look on his face this guy you're going to go hey buddy because he's non-threatening at all that's all i'm saying is that even from a marketing standpoint hd is 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 winning but you know, yes, marketing isn't everything, but, you know, if I'm a young writer uh, and I'm a new writer, I want to be portrayed more like this guy, confident, sitting there, you know, he's grabbing his crotch, so to speak, going like, hey, I got to set down here. This guy is kind of leaning forward like, excuse me, um, where can I get a double mocha frappuccino iced coffee thing around here? Plus this guy here... He looks like a cross between if Keanu Reeves and Christian Slater, you know, slept with the same chick and you really can't figure out, you know, who the who the baby daddy is. This guy, you're not going to ask any questions about his life. You, you're just not because with those rings on his hands, he's going to punch you in the face, knock your teeth down your throat, and you're going to be texting your dentist for the next available appointment because you're definitely not going to be able to talk to anybody on the phone after approaching him. So, yes, marketing isn't everything, but it certainly is something.
And believe me, there's nothing wrong with riding a trike. There really isn't. Three wheels is definitely more stable than two wheels. I mean, think about it. When we're on our Can-Ams, we don't think about anything. We don't think about puddles. We don't think about potholes, you know, except for our suspension. We really don't want to hit a pothole and screw our suspension. We don't think about gravel and dirt and sand. We don't think about how high the driveway apron is. We just, we just ride. We don't think about those things like you'd have to think about when we were on two wheels. But a young rider, a new rider is going to be full of that sense of adventure and just true ballsiness and that invincibility that you feel when you get on, on two wheels. No matter how much people tell you to be safe and watch what you're doing, when we're on two wheels, we think we're truly invincible because we have to out there. But a younger rider getting on a trike, I, 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 don't, I don't know about that. I, I, I don't see it. I see a young rider getting their testosterone up or, you know, if it's a woman, her testosterone up, you know, riding as fast they can and as ballsy as they can on those two wheels stopping at a light looking around going yeah yeah this is me on three wheels on a trike yeah i think it's a little bit too early you know for a young rider or a new rider to to make to make that that jump to three wheels plus you know a lot of times, younger riders are riding in groups and meeting up with their friends or whatever, and they back their bikes in next to each other, and they go in to get a bite to eat or a cup of coffee or whatever or a beer. You know, it, it's a part of the culture. You, you, you show up with a Can-Am. Well, to me, that's part of an older, more mature culture. It's part of the been there, done that culture. It's part of the whole... I don't have to impress anyone. I'm in my 40s. I'm in my 30s. I'm in my late 20s, whatever. But you're at a point in life where you don't care about impressing people. You really, really don't care about impressing people anymore. You just want to do what's fun for you. Can-Am, that's the kind of rider you're attracting. HD, well, HD, you're still attracting the testosterone-laden, ballsy, kind of, I'm going to get up and go kind of rider. That to me is the difference. All right, just to give you a little idea of where I'm coming from, this was my beast before I got sick and I switched to K&M. I actually had two of them at the time. One was a Kawasaki Nomad 1500. I forgot what year, but it was the first year that they had fuel injection. That was an awesomely comfortable bike. I mean, it was like riding a couch. I used to go on long rides with my friends windshield the most comfortable seat i've ever been on it was absolutely a dream to ride and this was my outlaw this was my victory kingpin i loved this bike this bike was so badass i would idle down the street and it would set off alarms so i'm, I'm a two-wheel guy i really really am i'm happy to be out there riding again the can-am is really really cool but if if I could snap my fingers and have a choice and you'd say, Rob, would you rather ride your Can-Am or no, uh, my Kingpin? I wouldn't even let you finish the sentence. It would be my Kingpin any day of the week. I mean, look, look at the ass on that bitch. How gorgeous is that bike? This was an absolute dream. This was my dream bike. It took me a while to get it. It took me a while to customize it with the apes and all that and the bags. But man, oh, did I absolutely love this bike. So... When you tell me the future of riding, my future is to get well and to get back on two wheels. It really, really is. The Can-Am is an awesome machine for me to hop on and go 3,000 miles across the country. It really, really is. But for everyday tooling around or short trips or just to, just to, just to leave the house and have that badass feeling again, it's something like this. It really, really is. You know, and I hear a lot of people, and it's pretty much self-proclaimed by Can-Am that this is the future of riding. Sorry, no it's not. The future of riding is what Honda's doing. Honda's doing a self-balancing two-wheeled motorcycle that the suspension and the steering constantly adjusts to keep the bike upright at a full, complete stop without you putting your feet down. That is the future of riding. I think I talked about that on my Nikon video. But, and by the way, you could catch that right about here. I love the timing of things. But, you know, 
That's the future of riding. If Honda came out with that and it was perfected technology and it was at a decent price point, with how I feel now and my limitations now, I would get one of them because there's there's truly nothing like leaning and going fast on two wheels. There really, really is. And I mean, the Can-Am is fun. It truly is. But the Can-Am is as much fun to me as I'm allowed to have right now. If I could get back on two wheels, I'm going to get back on two wheels. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I'm going to keep my Can-Am if I can for longer trips, but... I'm going back to two wheels as, as fast as I can. If I get healthy again, I'm going to be riding a Chieftain Dark Horse Indian. I've had my eye on that for a long time. If I'm not well in, let's say, five, six years down the road, Honda really, really perfects their, um, their new technology, then I'm going with that. But the main thing is that everyone is thinking, and all these trike manufacturers, you know, this isn't the future of riding. This is the future of riding for people that don't want to or cannot ride two wheels. That's how it's going to go. So self-balancing two-wheel motorcycles, that to me is going to be the future. That to me looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. That to me looks like it's going to be worth the money that they're going to put at these price points. But we don't know what those price points are going to be just yet. All I know is, is that coming from the two-wheel world, and now into the three wheel three wheeled world, two wheel is is better. I'm 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 sorry to say it. I know it might piss off a lot of people, but being on two wheels, being able to lean, and having that kind of control, that to me is better than riding a trike. I hate to break it to everyone, but it really really is. But the Can Am is an awesome machine. It truly truly is. But when you make statements like this is going to revolutionize riding, no. It's not, and it's not going to grab new riders, and it's not going to get young riders, especially when you have companies like Harley-Davidson offering the things that they're offering at the prices that they're offering. Just being realistic here. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Again, I'm going to try to do a few more videos compa comparing the Can-Am Riker you know, to a lot of the other quote-unquote entry-level or new rider bikes by other manufacturers, and I know there's quite a few. I know Honda has one, I know Yamaha has one, I believe Kawasaki has one. So, again, Can-Am, I didn't start this. You did when you guys said this is for entry level or new or young riders. So, we're gonna put that to the test. So far, you failed against HD. Now, I know there's gonna be a lot of people out there that have a different opinion, and that's awesome. Give me your opinion in the comments, Just I had a guy the other day that he's getting a little bit rude with people and he's probably going to go bye-bye sometime soon. So the only thing I ask is that when you're commenting, please be respectful to each other. I mean, honestly, when you're commenting and talking to each other, talk to each other like we're kind of sitting around having a beer or a cup of coffee. You know, we're all human beings at the end of the day. We're all going through stuff. We all have crap in our life. We don't need some moron calling us a jerk or telling us that we're full of whatever. You know, just be nicer to each other in, in every aspect of your life. Check this out for yourself. It only adds to the conversation. What would you choose? The Can-Am Riker or one of the offerings, one of the street offerings from HD, or this absolutely beautiful, and I'm tipping the scales here, and I'm not really an HD fan, Iron 883. Thank you guys so much again for stopping by. Please hit the like button. Please share. Please subscribe. And more importantly, let me know what you think. Thanks for stopping by again. I hope you guys have a great, great day.